Come on, Pete, pay attention, head in the bloody clouds again, that's your problem. Pick up the oars and row like I told you. That's faster than that, son. Come on, keep them both in time. Doing my best. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. And try and keep your weight in the middle, too. You don't want to tip us in. What a wonderful start of the holiday that would be. Do you want to help? No, this is a test of your listening, son. I'm trying to work things out for yourself. How would you learn if I did everything for you, eh? I didn't mean do it all, just take an oar, maybe. Well, say I did, and you could only work one oar. Then where would we be? We'd be going round in circles. <laughs> Oh, now, look, there's a strong current coming up. It's a good test, son. Now, remember what I taught you, and this won't be a problem. I keep us straight and true. Strong arms. I said strong. No, 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 no! I'm trying. That side, harder on the poor side. Help. Jesus, Pete, that one! God, you get back there, I'll do it. Oh. I knew you weren't made for this. Maybe you're right. you can go the rest of the way. Current's not as strong now. Here you go. I have done my best, Pete. Whatever you do in life, you can't expect anyone to do things for you. My experience. I won't always be here to help. And there'll come a time when you've got to prove you can do something by yourself. Ahoy! Good roar, Captain Hamilton. Oh, get me away from this thing. It looks calm out there, but it, it's rougher than you think. Oh, it does look nice and calm, you're right. It's the current. Can't you see it? It's very nasty ripples. It's practically a storm surge. I think if the wind had been in another direction... Oh, I'd... come here. Don't you know me at all by now? Come on, let's walk. All right, thank you. Well, I've got used to being this relaxed. <laughs> What's it going to be like getting back to college, having to smarten ourselves up? I really like you like this, it's nice. Remember when we met on that train and you're so self-conscious about your tie? Oh, I remember. Seems silly now, eh? You were wearing that lovely sweater you got on now, weren't you? Not this. Well, I only bought it recently. It's a new colour for me. My mistake. My memory must be playing tricks on me. Ah, oh, strange. So, do you want the good news? Absolutely. While you're out, I checked with the hotel and they said we could stay another night. And I thought, why not extend this holiday as long as we can? <laughs> extend the celebration. Celebration? Oh, you know, um, the summer of work. The fact that it's practically all done now. And perhaps we could celebrate us too. 
Us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Absolutely Hamilton. Oh, stop it. I don't say it like that. You do, then that's fine. Ready to go home soon? Not in the slightest. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> oh, look at these houses. Oh, if I had found someone I could row with, perhaps I could be living here. Hey, I can row. <laughs> well, that's good, because I think I might be in love. <laughs> oh? Me too. Well, those two houses up on the cliff, look. Oh, which one should we have, the red or the blue? It's arbitrary. Oh, go on, pick one. Uh, okay, uh, red. My choice exactly. Oh, almost like I knew what you were going to say. Well, either house looks big enough for me. Maybe more than me one day. Family. Well, like I said, one day. What about your work? Wouldn't you want to finish that first? Well, finish work before I settle down, you mean? Yes. Yeah, I love my work. You know I do. I'm not going to finish it. I'm going to keep going as long as I can. I don't see why it has to be one or the other. Would you give up work to have children? I would. I really would. Mm, well, well, I think the thing is, I wouldn't expect a man to give it all up. Not if he really loved his work. So why does the rest of the world think that we should give it all up? I keep thinking about all these bright young women I'm teaching and I'm scared. I'm, I'm scared that despite all they've achieved, despite the fact that they're walking out into the world with a degree from Cambridge, the first thing they'll be asked is how fast can you type? You're probably right. It's a real waste of talent. It really is a waste, you're right. Even the jobs they get, they're not expected to keep once they've had children. All it needs is people to stand up to it. No, you're right. I think women have every right to state their claim. Not a woman this time. Women have been making a stand, throwing themselves under horses since the suffragettes. We need men to start fighting for it. You can count on me. I hope you do make a stand. Won't become part of all that. It's not easy, you know. A lot of people are still living in the dark ages about all this. Your professor, for one, I'll bet. I think you're probably right there. He doesn't know about any of this, does he? This, this, this work? Exactly. The work we've done. You will tell him, won't you? Of course I will. I'll go straight to his office as soon as we're back. Scouts on her? Scouts on her. Good. Happy? Happy. <laughs> you? Very. Peter, marvellous to see you. Do come in. Take a seat. I have to say, I'm delighted. Delighted? <laughs> well, that's, that's wonderful to hear. I must say it's very impressive. Very kind of you. Not at all. It's your work. I think the direction you took it gave it something of real value. Well, as I say, quite apart from the climate side of things, the method you developed to track radiation, I can see it having far-reaching implications, and not just in your own field. It's marvellous. I'm glad you think so. Yeah, first-rate piece of work, Peter. First-rate. 
This other name on here, Dr. Clara McKirick. I presume we can drop that. Clara was responsible for half the work, Professor. I, I couldn't. Oh, well, um, I understand you probably had some little research assistants, but uh, well, we all have secretaries. <laughs> we, we just don't usually put the name on the front cover of the paper. Yeah, Clara did more than a, a little research, really. Hmm. Oh, well, I see. Tell me, have you seen your friend Joseph recently, Samuel? I have. Doing so well in their new positions. I would dearly love to see the same for you, Peter. And more for you, in fact. Well, thank you. It will be so well deserved after all these years, especially after the risk I took. Risk? A boy from a grammar school, first in his family to make it to university, you know what I'm saying. It's been really wonderful to give you this opportunity. I would just hate you to throw it away by misattributing your own hard work. That's all. For whatever reasons you might have. I, uh, I, I appreciate your concern, but Clara is responsible for the work on this, too. Hmm. Well, as I say, it really is very good, and I'm not the only one who thinks so. You've given it to someone else already. I knew a few who I thought might be interested. I thought you'd be pleased. In fact, I think you might want to prepare yourself for being the center of attention for a little while. I'm sure you would be able to cope, but I think it's perhaps not quite the sort of thing you'd like to foist on a young woman's shoulders. Whatever it is, I'm sure Clara could handle it. With this name on here, there is a good chance it will cause problems. I'm sure I could handle them. <laughs> this isn't all about you, I'm afraid. It could be problems for everyone. Clara was close with Molly Shannon, wasn't she? The one suspected of being a communist spy. She wasn't charged. How close they were is the real question. Clara joined Molly on that anti-British protest march, I hear. It was anti-nuclear defense, not anti-British, Well, you know my thoughts on that. They can be one and the same thing. A lot of people, very important people, believe you are either with this country or against it. Some of the benefactors of this college. My father he used to call this university one of the greatest contributions Britain has made to the world. I would agree with that. Wouldn't you? Absolutely. I'd hate to be the one to undermine it. The affair with this Cambridge Four business has been bad enough. <laughs> we can't change the past, Peter. But we can learn from it before we fool ourselves into remembering it too kindly. Now with this name on here, and the associations one might make, you see what I'm saying? If you met Clara, I'm, I'm sure you'd agree her name should be on the paper. Good God, Peter, I am trying to make you understand something. <laughs> this is precisely the way the rod sets in. It's the slow knife. Members of this university were recruited to spy for the Soviet Union 10 years ago. Now, members of this university are demanding we lay down our weapons, the only defense we have against the very same foreign power. What happens in 10 years' time? And what happens to the integrity of this college in 10 years? If you share your work on a whim with a girl you've taken a fancy to, and what happens 10 years after that? cannot survive by making oneself vulnerable. That is why this university is still here. That is why I am still here.
I hope you understand how much I care about your success. It's so common for work to fade into obscurity after it's published. It would be a shame if yours were denied my full-throated support, especially after so many years. Would. It would, absolutely. I cannot make your decisions for you, Peter. By all means, publish with Clara as a co-author if you're feeling generous, but if you do, you'll have to take your chances. It would be difficult for me to bring to bear any influence I have. By way of illustration, I've been addressing Whitehall, Mr. Kibbing. Thank you. Fred, I can't tell you much more now, but he's a good man. Cambridge man. And you may find there's one more reason to leave Clara out of things. I'm sure things will become clear soon. I think you've made things very clear. Well, let me know what you decide. Just knock any time. My door is always open. Clara came up with a good idea too. 
Ale nežiš mi vieme. Aha. Mám teda zase? Ale už sa takto zesičujú. Ale druhá rána, ale už sa za mnou ale. Dr. Hamilton, Peter, how do you do? So good to meet you. How do you do? Excuse me, I won't be a moment. Still three o'clock, yes? Oh, no, no need to reschedule. This won't take long. Should be very quick. Right then, please do take a seat. Delighted you could make it to London. I do hope you get the time to enjoy it a little too, considering how busy you've been recently. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll try to. Good, do. Anyway, I imagine you're wondering why we asked you here. Well, it can't have surprised you that your field of study has been of increasing interest to us, especially since the war. You're, you're, you're interested in climatology? Oh, of course. The paper is going very well here. Well, it is now, thank you. Oh, yes, your professor, John Hargreaves, passed us a copy. And it's impressive, the amount of information you've managed to gather. Although I imagine the process of gathering it was rather difficult on your limited budget. I, uh, I had some help. Oh yes, we, uh, we heard about that. As I said, we were most impressed and wanted to make you an offer. A reward, even. Reward? Well, you've no doubt taken your budget to its limits by now. What would you say if I could guarantee you a practically unlimited budget for further study? Ensure you had the best equipment, like the Americans. Take you right to the heart of things. The, the heart of things? I believe you traced the source of the radiation back to Antarctica, didn't you? Well, well it was um, me and, and someone else. I see. Well, whatever the details, I'd say that warrants further study on location, wouldn't you? It does? It certainly does. We could place you with the Falkland Islands Dependency Survey working in Antarctica. Scientist bots. Happy amateurs. Very passionate, like yourself. Of course, you'd... Probably have to sort a few things out with the other name we saw on the paper before you go. I hope that wouldn't be too difficult, considering what's on off. Uh, the other name, um, Clara, you mean? Ah, lovely name. Probably for the best, she wouldn't be able to go. Oh, not my say-so, I'm afraid. It's run a bit like the army down there. No women allowed. I, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I like the idea. I can assure you this is bigger than any one person. I'm sorry, I'm... I'm not sure what this is yet. I see. Well, you signed those papers on your way in earlier, so I'm at liberty to tell you a little more. Things in the Antarctic, they've been a little strained recently. Lots of vested interests, territorial claims overlapping. Some sides wanting to secure the resources under the ground. Now, this kind of thing has been going on for decades, of course. W what kind of thing? Oh, the Germans were flying over there, dropping swastikas in big circles. Before the war, that is. All a bit ridiculous, really. Now, I'm afraid it's the Soviets we've got to contend with. Bit of a royal mess, if you ask me. Still, we're trying to work with them. That, that sounds like a wise idea was wise, or so it seemed. It should all be in everyone's interest, you see. Every country signed up to something called the Antarctic Treaty, 
all a rather clever bit of politicking that happened behind the scenes a few years ago. Set up to ensure that Antarctica is used for strictly peaceful purposes. No weapons are to be used. No one can make any future claims on the land. Now, if it sticks, everyone will be frightfully happy. Every side content that they've staked their claim. No more aggression, let's say. Sounds sensible. You'd have thought so. We've managed to placate the Soviets so far. This is all strictly confidential, but the sounds coming from Whitehall are not good. We're rather worried that it might all fall through. I'm sure you are, but how does this affect me? Well, in addition to the climate science you'd be able to do, tracking the radiation in the clouds and so forth, we'd like you to inform us of any other sources of radiation out there, what the readings are. If there are any bombs being set off on the continent, it's important that we know as much as we can about them. We don't know what the Soviets might do next. You'd be using the very best equipment, as I said, useful for your career, useful for us. This is still climate science, yes? Absolutely right. The less we're involved, the better, really. But as I say, if you can help us in this small way, it would certainly help that career of yours. My career's fine. Thank you. Well, after speaking with a few people, Professor Hargreaves, for example, I'm sure that whatever your academic ambitions, after working on something as important as this, you'd have no trouble progressing. And if nothing else, think of the adventure of it. What a reward it would be for all your hard work. What do you think? All right. I'll consider it. Please do. Sorry, I've got a meeting in Westminster in 20 minutes. We'll have to cut this short. It's been very good to meet you. Do let me know. And if this Clara thing feels like a sticking point, all I can say is... Sometimes we all have to answer to something greater than ourselves. Why not think of it as an opportunity for you and to do what's right? I see. Well, um, I'll do what's right. You can trust me on that. I hope so. Women come and go. This is for your country.
You didn't like it. I mean, I might have enjoyed it if I was a ten-year-old boy, but it was just boys and their toys again. Is that a bad thing? They're presenting themselves as if they're heroes instead of the land grabbers they actually were. Okay, I, I see what you mean. I know what you're about to see, that they were just men testing themselves against the world. I do hear where you're coming from. Fine, I'll stop it now. And another thing, where were all the women? I counted one, she was a cook. She was a very pretty cook. Are you serious? Okay, okay, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm watching you, Hamilton. I'm only teasing. I, I do see what you mean, really. It's depressing. <sighs> Let's turn the radio on, would you? <clears throat> of course. much. The Prime Minister has urged for calm after news from Washington emerged tonight that the Antarctic Treaty is on the brink of falling through. Neither Britain, the United States, nor Soviet Russia could reach a deal. And in an increasingly nervous political atmosphere, there is now the risk that there will be no agreement to stop any act of aggression in Antarctica. After pinning the blame firmly on what he called Russia's continuing aggression, 
the Prime Minister warned that the next steps are far from clear, and that in this climate of mistrust, the world needed to stay vigilant. It remains to be seen who will make the next move. feeling now? Ah, uh, a bit shitty. But better. And I just, uh, just needed that... that sleep. Mate, ah, uh, that bloody noise on the radio was driving me mad. You know there's a, a Russian voice that appears on that channel once in a while? Are you sure you're not hearing things? Huh? I might have been out of it for a while, but I know what I heard. Yeah, sounded urgent, whatever it was. Uh, same phrase over and over. Oh, Jesus, it's leg. Do you think the Russians are still out here? Uh, bloody well, I hope not. Well, I hope someone's here. They don't want us here, you know? Why the hell should they save us, eh? You don't know that they wouldn't help us, do you? Whatever you found out there, you weren't supposed to see it. If you think some Soviet's gonna be happy to see you get out of here alive, you've got another thing coming. And personally, if I saw one out here, I'd make sure he didn't make it home either. Before he did the same to me. Alpha Romeo Lima, this is Faraday. Faraday station calling. Alpha Romeo Lima, this is Faraday. Faraday station calling. Are we glad to hear you? Hello? We picked up a distress call from this frequency. Can you hear me? Over. Yes, 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 I can hear you. You're very strange. Can you tell me your position? Over. Floyd, what's our position? Uh, 82 degrees south, 19 west. We're at 82 degrees south, 19 west. Hello? Hello, can you, t can you tell me what's happening? Why is everywhere deserted? Over. Now, hold on. What the hell are they doing? Um, it's possible that there's been some sort of radiation leak. The Soviets have been broadcasting a warning signal which might have triggered an evacuation. Uh, we think that your location is within... Um, I'm sorry, I can't tell you anymore. Uh, don't worry, there's no imminent danger. Um, can we confirm 82 degrees south, 19 west, correct? Over. That's right. We're, we're sending a rescue party out. Hold on tight. Over and out. Wait, wait, don't go. They're gone. That again, it's too bloody sinister. Turn it off! Oh, 
Ah, oh, well, ain't that a beauty? I can't believe it. <laughs> They're coming. Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. Oh, come on, you heard them. They're sending someone out. Oh, I hope so, mate. We're both in line for knighthoods if we make it out, that's for sure. You still need to sober up. Your government loves to give out honours to failed Antarctic explorers. Otherwise, the whole endeavour would just look nuts. Shackleton, remember him? Marooned most of his men on an island for a year. They were pioneers, surely. Robert Scott, he got the polar medal, didn't even make it home. Heroic failures. <sighs> just like us. Hey, how does Sir Peter Hamilton sound? Uh, anyway, that's if we make it out. <sighs> Hope they find us before the food runs out. Well, I found you again, didn't I? Yeah. You did, mate. You did. Which reminds me, how did you find the plane again? Uh, dumb luck. No, 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 come on, seriously. Well, no, it was lucky. Spotting the flares that you sent up. What's that? I never sent up any flares, mate. Yes, you did. Stop messing around. No, the flare box was empty. Not been checked in years, my guess. Bloody panicked me for a while. I saw them with my own eyes. How else do you think I got back to you? Search me. Why don't you take a look out? You see anything? It's too hazy. Wait! There it is. That's not far away. So there is some place up here. Do you think they're friendly? Chances are no. We're gonna need more food soon. Put that down. This is from World War One. What do you believe? Don't mess with that thing again. You've done enough damage. Here. One bullet left. I don't want it. We know there's something going on, but we don't know who that could be out there. All I'm saying is, be on your guard. I'm not shooting anyone. Just raise it up when you approach. That's all. Make sure you're the one in charge. If in doubt, make sure you're the one that fires first. There's only one bullet. Just the one. <laughs> you better hope there aren't two of them. So, you're gonna wait around here all day then? I'll be back soon. Oh, whiskey, mate. I'll be happy as Larry. And I've got this. So, just keep that gun raised. You'll be fine. Make sure you don't get that knighthood posthumously. Cold. 
You. <laughs> Me too. You are right. Peter, marvelous to see you. You've come at the right time. England are 37 for four. Terrible state of affairs. Anyway, you said you wanted to see me about something, please. Something you wanted to let me know. There is. All right. Well, have you come to a decision? Clara and I, we, we're too close now. I can't take her off. I must say, I admire you. It takes conviction to stand by a principle like that. As I've always said, your decision. You will be fine. Doing. Get, get the hell out! This man is not in good condition. Jesus. Peter. What have you done to him? Maybe I saved his life for an hour. For now? What, till your band of merry men turn up? We need to leave. Can this plane fly? What? Are you the pilot? Can this plane fly? Peter! Peter, what's going on? Why do you bring this damn Soviet agent in here? I nearly killed him. We need to leave. You can bloody leave. The British are coming for coming. us. Coming? No, no. They're coming, all right. Just not for you. No, no. Nobody is coming. You can think what you like. We're staying put. And you, my friend, can get the hell out. I tell you, there's nobody else out there now. We need to move. Right. Who the hell are you? What are you doing? I'm telling you to piss off you and however many comrades you have out there. You do not know what is at stake. You do not know anything. We will die here. We need to... <laughs> We do not have time for this. Now, can this plane fly? It doesn't matter. We just need to wait till our guys arrive. What is it? Uh, is it the engine? We don't need to fly out. If it is the engine, maybe I can fix. How the hell did you get here in the first place? You must already have transport. He's, he's got a vehicle. Yeah, I had one. No fuel. It's true. It stopped in the snow. What, what happened out there? I... I didn't need to shoot anybody. The man is right. I'm not feeling very well, I think. Yeah, what's this about a vehicle? I told you, the vehicle is dead. But you have one. I saw it outside. Will it move? Yeah. This man put a bullet through the engine. He's dead. He likes his weapons too much, I see. Here. Give it. So, we need to fly or we die here. Die here? What's going on out there? It's a, it's a radiation leak, is that it? It's been contained, they told us on the radio. No leak, an explosion. They are dropping a nuclear bomb. No, no, you're wrong. Soon. You have radio? You have heard countdown? Beep, beep like Sputnik? Oh, that. I mean, it, it's, it's all right. They told us it's nothing. It's just a radiation warning. It is countdown. We do not have long. You, you have heard it getting faster, yes? Yeah, Peter, it was on that frequency when I switched it off. See if you can get it. getting faster all the time. The faster it gets, the less time we have. We need to leave. No, they're coming. They said they'd keep broadcasting, so we knew they were on their way. And are they? Peter, turn the dial.
Can you hear anything? Uh, hold on. What's going on? There's nothing there. Christ almighty. I am an engineer. Maybe I could fix the aircraft if you'll tell me what is wrong. Do we just need to pull it out of the snow? Is there damage? Uh, no, no, it's, it's in good shape. I saved the plane, but uh, it's more complicated. Frozen carburetor, that's my guess. You have lighter? Something to heat it? Wait. Then I can fix. Can I help? No, don't worry. If I am careful, it will be enough. Then we're all right. We're saved. Maybe. Maybe we are all saved. Jesus! What is happening? Saved by a Soviet! No, it's all right. We're gonna be all right. It doesn't matter where he's from. He might be the only man within a, a, a thousand miles who can fix this aircraft. <laughs> lucky we found him. Yeah, lucky you couldn't shoot straight. Be yes! Wait, what? Well, what is it now? You say you land the plane well, but there's hole underneath. Ugh. In the fuel tank. No, no, no. You said you saved the plane. Oh, I saved us, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can close it up, but that is not a problem. There's no fuel. Can you check again? There's nothing. Oh, Christ. Then it doesn't matter even if we fix the engine. There will be no point. We're screwed, then. Yeah, un unless uh, there is fuel in the wing tanks. Maybe? Not this time. Flying light. Then we are, as you say, screw. Yeah. Might as well make use of that lighter. Not your usual brand, I would guess. No. Thank you. Seeing as we're all doomed, might as well be mates. Ah. Take it, you don't have any out there anymore. Comrades. No. Why were you alone? I was uh, following everyone as we evacuated. Uh, in the storm, we could not see each other. My vehicle ran out of fuel. I was behind them. They did not see me stop. Uh, maybe they reached the coast before they even realized. They just left you there? I was desperate. I prayed for them to come back, but uh, I knew they wouldn't. The snow covered our tracks, and uh, they had their orders. They wanted to survive. Yeah, they would have been crazy to come back. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, you have not been so lucky, too. Storm got us both, eh? Well, your English is very good. I take it you're not a spy. This would be very bad spying. <laughs> no, I, I am engineer. And a translator too sometimes. I, I could help translate British and American radar traffic. That makes me think. What were you doing here? All right. <laughs> In this new spirit of international cooperation, you, you might as well I was asked to take this gentleman out to the big British science base down south. He was supposed to be studying there. That right, Peter? Climate science. The, the clouds. Yeah, that's what we told everyone, too. You were doing climate science here as well? No, officially. Unofficially, it uh, was a little more than that. You were studying something else? We were studying you. 
I am surprised you did not know. You have been studying us. No, no, I was going to study radiation in the clouds. Climate science, yes. Ah, that's all. Maybe it is you who are a spice. Yeah, but it seems you don't know all our secrets just yet. I saw the mine. You? You made it that far? I did. So, you, you saw the base where we lived? Hmm. It must have been awful there. No, we packed everything up in the big trucks before they left. You, you don't think we really live like that? You, you must have thought we were animals. No. No, I didn't think you were. Well, who says you're not? Oh, he's been fun here. He's getting drunk. Well, there's not much reason to lay off it now. So what were the rest of you doing out there? We uh, monitored that mine, checked for leaks, monitored for radiation levels. But we monitored other things too. Other mines? Not that, no. Your bomb tests? No. Your bomb tests. No. Yours. No, the British don't test out here. The Antarctic Treaty prevents them. It should prevent the Americans too. But this does not stop them. Well, it's interesting what they have told you. Did they tell you to study our bombs? Uh, well, <clears throat> they did say there might be the possibility the Soviets were using them, but... Did they tell you you would really be studying your own? I don't like what you're suggesting. I don't know what they said, but our government... They lied to us. Well, my government wouldn't. Yeah, what... Whatever you think... We know British bombs have been getting too close. Shock waves from one caused the landslide, killed two men. The, the Norwegian base? Yeah, I believe so. We don't test here, seems you do. And each time your bombs uh, go, they, they, they make more places unusable, like the mine. Are you saying that's a, a British bomb that's gonna go off? No. This bomb is Russian, and it will be dropped right over the mine. What? Wait, wait, you destroy your own mine? Yes, the mine is old, they can leave it. But they, they want to destroy it, to uh, keep it a secret. Nice way to keep a secret. Yeah, very bloody inconspicuous. Maybe they, they think it is better this way. Better than everyone discovering what they've been up to? Stockpiling uranium, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs>